Ash is the perfect legend to quickly move your team into a favorable position. She has the fastest and cleanest short range repositioning ability in Apex Legends. Her kit is almost made for hunting down kills in aggressive plays, and today I'll teach you how to do just that. Welcome to yet another Guide Wednesday where I use my over 6000 hours to teach you how to play Apex Legends. Today we're going to be going over Ash. Ash is the second most recent legend and the ninth most picked legend in Apex. She gets picked in public matches in every degree of rank, and her pick rate has been picking up a lot in competitive play on open maps such as Stormpoint. This is because of her ultimate, which allows you to make fast rotations and take positions faster and safer than any other legend in the game. Her kit also helps her to find kills and fights to push if you want to play aggressive and farm high kill games in public matches. Let's dive into this diverse kit and let's start with the passive. Ash's passive Mark for Death shows the location of recent death boxes on the map and how long ago the enemy has died. These marks disappear after 180 seconds. You can also scan a death box for surviving attackers by pressing H or down on a D-pad on controller on a death box. Once you interact with a death box, either any enemy or even your own teammate's position will be pinged on the map with an enemy here ping for about 8 seconds. The Ash will also receive a notice of how many enemies got scanned and the attackers will be alerted of the scan for 4 seconds. If the attackers are dead, it will instead return no living attackers. While Ash's passive is meant to be used to hunt down the attackers, it sometimes has the opposite effect, and an aggressive team might turn around and run back towards the bodies if they do get scanned. If you think that the team is prone of pushing, you can always try waiting for them or even set up an ambush. Speaking of an ambush, Ash's tactical ability, the Arc Snare, is great for setting up ambushes. This ability throws a spinning snare that damages and tethers the first enemy that gets too close. Once thrown, this slow-moving projectile flies in a straight line until it hits an object or a person. And once it lands, it creates a snare trap with an instant radius of 4 meters. The first enemy who enters this snare trap immediately takes 10 damage to the flesh or 20 damage to shields and is then snared for about 3 seconds. The trap lasts for 6 seconds if nobody is snared. Anyone stuck in the snare cannot move out of the radius, and if they try, they can get pulled back until it eventually lets go after 3 seconds. The only real way to get out is to wait for the duration or by using abilities such as the Dimensional Rift or Face Breach, and in some cases, other movement abilities. Though odds are this is just because of a buggy interaction. A triggered arc snare in an exposed position can lead to a free kill, so try to follow up your snare with some grenades and focus fire if you notice someone getting stuck. The snare can also be used to poke damage without really wasting any resources, either by taking 20 shield from an enemy and charging your evo, or sticking someone out of cover which could lead to a free kill. As such, despite its 25 second cooldown, you want to try to use it as much as possible. The arc snare can't be used in conjunction with healing or shooting, but can still be used when using a zipline or other movement abilities. You can use it the same way you'd use any other throwable in the game. This means that you can use this to quickly seal off the path behind you if you happen to be escaping or you're backing off to heal. Because of how slow it is, you might be better off aiming the snare slightly behind cover to catch an enemy off guard if they are running in, such as on top of a door frame or behind very small cover which cuts off the line of sight. This also means you won't have to hope that they happen to be running through the radius when the snare is flying through the air. That being said, the arc snare doesn't really have much power on its own and really shines when combined with other things, such as grenades, other legends abilities, or even ultimates. A few powerful abilities to combine the snare with are Horizon's Black Hole, Cossack's Nox Gas, Fuse's Marvel Load and Knuckle Cluster, and Revenant's Silence, since the snare keeps the enemy locked in just in time for those abilities to activate to their peak potential. As with Wraith, the real power in Ash's kit comes with our ultimate, Face Breach. It tears open a one-way portal to a targeted location. After its activation, Ash instantly enters the face tear. Keep in mind that there's an animation between entering and exiting the face, so you won't instantly pop out on the other side. The tear has a maximum range of 62.5 meters and it takes about 3 seconds from activation to go to maximum distance. Keep in mind though, the ultimate is very loud on activation and any enemy should know that you've used it. Unlike most legends, her ultimate can be used for windows, meaning you can set up a portal in or out of a house if you want to escape or just to surprise enemies. Its distance is calculated in a straight line from the ash, and can even be used to climb up onto high grounds up to 62 meters above you. Unlike other positioning abilities such as Octanes or Pathfinders, Ash and her teammates are completely safe when moving, and the portal disappears afterwards so it can't be used against you later on if you choose to hold that high ground. It's also significantly faster than those abilities, so overall it's just a more efficient way to take a position. The only downside is that the portal only goes one way and leaves you very exposed, meaning you don't want to place one unless you are sure that it's safe on the exit side. This can still be used to your advantage. 
If a team is chasing you hard, you can instantly take a few steps back after placing a portal, getting a chance to shoot them in the back without them really getting an opportunity to shoot you as well. Ash's ultimate is extremely good in late game competitive apex lobbies, and in some cases pubs are ranked. On some maps, like World's Edge, you can actually ash ult on top of the buildings or certain mountains that are out of bounds. While yes, you are out of bounds and you have to leave in 15 seconds, it buys you crucial time to stay alive and to secure placement points, or even a chance to set up a push on a team below you. If you find yourself in a hot circle with a lot of teams alive and you need to find someone to set up for the next ring, Ash can instantly make a portal on top of an unoccupied position which your team can use to hold off the rest of the server, something that makes her super viable in professional Apex. Ash's ult can also be activated mid-air. The end of the portal always has to land on the ground, but the entrance can be practically done at any time. This means you can make it very difficult for your attackers to follow you if you jump off of a high ground and activate the face tier while falling down, as they have to stop and try and line up their jump to hit it themselves. You will get bonus points if you do this while jumping off of the map, because then you're forcing enemies to risk themselves jumping off of the map just to chase a kill. Ash's ultimate has a fairly low recharge time of 2 minutes, so it can be used when rotating to get to your location faster than any enemy teams, and it can still be available when you may need it for team fights later. Here's a tiny super niche tip for you. Ash portal can be combined with Valkyrie ultimate to go very far distances across the map. Let me explain. Valkyrie will go farther the higher up you start your ultimate, meaning if you start it from a higher ground you can extend the scour dive by quite a bit. If you ash ult onto the aforementioned roofs or some mountain, you can extend the skyward dive by an incredible amount. When it comes to team fighting, Ash can act as either a fighter role or the supportive role. She doesn't belong too far on the front lines due to her lack of escape abilities, but still wants to be positioned around the middle of the team to provide snares or quick portals when needed. Specifically, Ash wants to look around for portals to provide flank angles, or ways for her entire team to reposition and move to favorable positions, such as high grounds or generally away from an exposed position. Communicating with your team can be a good idea if you want to make sure you're on the same page when looking for new positions to take. As with Octane, Ash is a great legend to play explosive with. If you get a good crack or a knock or any other opening on an enemy team, you can instantly portal into them, preferably behind cover, and close out the fight instantly. Ash, like most fighter legends, want to run a mid to close range weapon as a primary and typically a shotgun as secondary. It's not rare to see an Ash running something like R301, R99, Car, or Wingman as primary. This allows her to provide impactful damage from her middle position or high grounds while at the same time having explosiveness in close range combat or bubble fights. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, here is a reminder to hit that like button. And if you want to see me using these tips and more to hit a 20 bomb on Ash, that video is available on the screen right now. Thank you for watching again, and I'll see you all tomorrow.